how do I not talk about it with my fiance? He thinks everything I talk about is about the wedding. So even though we always talk about music, he now thinks I'm only talking about music for the wedding. It's so frustrating. Although I do want his personality stamp on the wedding, I understand this doesn't interest him the same way. And as he puts it, he is not the star. I am. Since he was married before, widowed, it's like he's framing our experience based on his previous one. Ugh! Okay. Well, hello, lovely humans. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie Wolfer. I'm your online wedding planner. And today I'm answering some of your submitted questions to kind of help you wade through what the heck you're supposed to be doing this whole wedding planning thing. Uh, especially when your fiance is just not into the details. As a reminder, if you are struggling with wedding planning, if you find these videos useful, you will find the master plan even more helpful. It's where I get to walk you through everything you need to plan your wedding, all in chronological order. I'm there live calls once a month to answer your questions in live time. I'm telling you, it is literally a replacement for having an actual real life wedding planner for a fraction of the cost. Now let's talk about the scenario here, right? We've got this situation where the groom's been married before, he's really just not into these details, the bride's feeling really unheard and unseen, and kind of feeling like maybe she's being painted a little bit more bridezilla-esque, and that's not what she's trying to do. So here's what I would recommend, and I recommend this for basically, you know, most couples, if one person is less into it than the other, schedule wedding dates. Like times where you talk about the wedding in a structured manner, that can help your fiance to not hate talking about it, right? Because sometimes they're just not into it. My husband was the same exact way. He had some things he was opinionated on, but for the most part, he was very much like, ah, just go with the flow, right? But I wanted to talk about it all the time. I wanted to get his opinion on everything and he didn't care. <laughs> He's like, I don't know, what do you want? Like, like receptive to the conversation. This one feels a little bit more like, please stop talking to me about this. I'm not interested. All you do is talk about the wedding. So there might be some relational stuff you're going to want to smooth out there. But as far as wedding conversations are concerned, do your best to schedule times to talk about it. That could be a weekly time that you set aside. Maybe it's Thursday evenings, 5 p.m. You sit down, you do your wedding planning conversations, right? You save up all of your questions. You write them down on a little notepad. Ideally, you'll have some sort of organization like the master plan so you can take things off as you go so you're not all over the place. You're not running around like a chicken with your head cut off and you have a nice, easy structure to follow, which is why I created the master plan. So you don't drive your fiance absolutely bonkers because you're all over the place. You have a nice, easy checklist, a streamlined thing to go through as opposed to inventing it all yourself. Thursday night, bring out the checklist, talk through what you need to talk through, divvy up tasks as you see fit, right? If you need to delegate things or get your fiance's input on anything, this is the time to do that. Now, if something comes up outside of that date, that wedding date time, I would highly recommend saying, hey, do you have a few minutes to talk about something wedding related real quick? Can we just spend five minutes? I just want to get your opinion on this real quick and then we'll move on. So this just sets up a little bit of a structure asking for permission. Hey, are you in a place to talk about the wedding right now? And if they're like, I can't, I'm just like, I'm overwhelmed or Honestly, can we just talk about it later? These are gonna be conversational and compromise skills that you're gonna to wanna to use in your marriage for the rest of your life. So set wedding dates, and if you need to talk about something outside of that time frame, test the waters to see if they're even willing to have the conversation first, because there are gonna be times they're just not that into it, or they're just not gonna to wanna to talk about it. And if you find yourself bubbling up with excitement and you need to like just let it out to somebody, Find someone other than your fiance to talk about. It could be a maid of honor. It could be your mom. It could be someone else in your life. It could be a forum. You could go on Reddit. You could join the master plan and come in our forums. You can come talk to me about it. I would love to hear everything about your wedding. Just bear in mind that it's okay if your fiance is not that interested. It's very normal. So if you set some structures and some boundaries and parameters around it, they might feel a lot more comfortable having conversations and don't feel like you're gonna spring it on them at any moment. Next question, how do I compromise with my fiance over wedding details? He wants to elope and wants to not be in front of people and I want a big celebration. Okay. <laughs> I've compromised with guest count so far, decreasing from 75 to 50 people. I wanna make sure he's comfortable and enjoys the day and I don't want it to turn into the Ashley show but I also want to get what I want out of the day as well. So recently I did a video on how to carve out alone time on your wedding day. Go watch that one. I'm gonna link it right here for you to check out. It's a literal application of where to put pockets of time for you to just relax or for your fiance to just relax. And these are gonna be really, really important moments for him to recharge his social battery. So he's not just stuck kind of going from thing to thing to thing. Um, and feeling really overwhelmed by that. So as kind of like a Reader's Digest version, I would suggest having a first look together so you guys can just be chill, have your moment, right? Breathe. Yes, there's going to be a camera there, but it's going to be a lot less overwhelming than uh, maybe having a first look in front of everyone at your ceremony. Secondary to that, take a little bit of time after your ceremony, go have some snacks, a glass of champagne, eat some of those hors d'oeuvres that you spent forever picking out. And then another option would be to consider having dinner alone. My guess is you won't want to do that as much. But basically create these little pockets of time where you can slip away and just be like, ah, this is so exciting. Because even if you're not an introvert, I highly recommend that you do that. So 
I think you're already kind of moving towards a great compromise here, right? Another thing you might want to do is uh, maybe avoid doing a grand entrance or grand exit, anything that feels really like spotlighty, you know what I'm saying? Another area where he might feel uncomfortable would be the first dance. So ask your DJ if you can keep that really short and you don't really need to highlight that. Maybe he wants to do a mother-son dance, maybe he doesn't. These are all moments where an introvert is gonna feel like, please make this moment be over as quickly as possible. All of those moments that make an introvert internally scream, please make this moment be over as quickly as possible. And once you come up with a list of those ideas, present them to him and say, hey, I understand that you wanted something smaller, you wanted an elopement, here are the ideas that I have. I'm gonna carve out time and our timeline for us to slip away or for you to slip away, just to make sure your social battery is like fully charged and you're doing good throughout the day and just so we can have really sweet moments together. I'm also thinking that we should probably not do a grand entrance. We'll just do like a soft entrance or just, you know, walk in with everybody without the fanfare. And let's not do a grand exit either. I still want to do a first dance, but if we keep it at about a minute or less, does that work with you? And by showing him that you are being very intentional with how the day is laid out and very intentional with all of his introvertness and trying to create a day that meets your needs and meets his needs at the same time will help him to feel a lot more reassured going into the wedding day. Next question. How do you encourage your fiance to be more excited in the planning process? Sometimes you just can't, okay? So many of us, at least me, I used to put on my mom's like pretty nightgowns and pretend it was a wedding dress when I was like five. I have been dreaming of this day since I was so tiny. Like so, I had no business dreaming of a wedding at that age, but I did, okay? And that's probably a story for a lot of you watching this. Maybe not all of you, but some of you were like, yeah, no, I've thought about this day for a really long time. I love weddings. I think they're really whimsy, really romantic, really beautiful, etc. And your fiance is like, I've literally really never thought of this day. I have not had a Pinterest board for the last seven years planning this out. I'm not that interested. So it's really hard to like invent excitement where there really isn't any to begin with, right? So instead of trying to get them excited about the entire process, try to find things that excite them normally. Like for example, my husband loves food, loves food. So when it came to picking out catering, he was game. When it came to dessert tasting, he was like, this is the best day of my life. He also has some different music tastes than me. <laughs> So getting some of his input for the songs that we had playing was a way to get him a little more excited about something that he had shown no interest in previously. He also helped me out with the beer selection, but honestly, beyond that, he didn't really care. So it was hard to get him excited about things that weren't important to him. But if I could focus on the things that interested him, then he'd be a lot more game. Because I don't know about you, but my husband has hobbies that like I am not interested in. Like I'm interested in because he's interested in them and I make a concerted effort to talk about them and to show him that, but I'm not gonna pick up archery anytime soon. I think it's cool that he does it. I, I just, it's not personally excited about archery, but I will sit and listen to him talk about the difference between a 70 pound bow and an 80 pound bow and why he needs to order new arrows because the current arrows that he has are, they're too flexible, right? And so he needs different ones that are not as flexible so he could be more accurate in his shooting. And so he could like tune the different, it's not my thing. I'm going to be there and I'm going to listen to it, but it's going to be really hard for him to get me excited about a subject that I'm just not that into. And last but most certainly not least, my fiance doesn't like taking pictures. How do I get him ready and excited to be taking pictures literally all day? Okay. First of all, you're not taking pictures all day. Like just deep breath. You're not going to be pulling this out of him the entire day. Just being like, come on, smile, dang it. Instead, you're going to have pockets of time where you take photos. So if you want, you can like literally show him on the timeline. Here's where we're doing this. Here's where we're doing that. And that will help to alleviate some of that concern. But what I really want you to do is I want you to backtrack a little bit. I want you, no, nay, I need you to go take photos with your photographer before your wedding. It's called engagement photos. And that way you get an opportunity to know this person and get in front of their camera and get the awkward stuff out before your big day. I would say a majority of people haven't had professional photography done in this capacity, if at all right? So your fiance may be like, I've never, I've never had anyone take pictures of, of me. I've never had a professional take pictures of me other than school photos. And those are all the worst. I think we can all collectively agree that we each have one or two Chandler Bing photos hiding in our school yearbooks, right? So if that is your fiance's only experience with photos, you're going to want to make sure we get the weird and the awkward out before your actual wedding day. That is the purpose of of engagement photos. Well, actually there's multiple purposes to it. Obviously you get photos out of this, which is fantastic. And it's cute for save the dates. It's cute to get printed. If you want to make a coffee table book for your guests to, to sign as your guest book on your wedding day, that's another fantastic option. But we're building the relationship and getting the weird out, right? And then when it comes to the wedding day, when you show him, hey, we're only gonna be doing photos right now for like 20, 30 minutes. And then later during cocktail hour, we're gonna be doing it for probably 40 minutes, 45 minutes. 
um, and then maybe some sunset photos later. But really, for the most part, your photographer is going to be taking a lot of candid photos as well. For the eight hours that they have you, they're not making you stand and pose the entire time. So how do you get them ready? Have photos ahead of time and show him exactly how long he's actually going to be in photos. How do you get him excited? You don't. You just minimize the amount of weird that comes out. Because getting your partner on board with planning a wedding when you both have differing opinions is hard, especially when that opinion is like, I don't have one. <laughs> that might be, I don't know what's worse, like arguing with me about my opinion or not having an opinion so they can't help me and then I have decision fatigue. Both of those, all of those are really really difficult to process through, especially when you're planning a wedding and you've never done this before. And right now you're frantically searching the internet for help on how to plan this whole thing. So if you find yourself struggling with making these decisions with your fiance or without your fiance, come join me in the master plan. I would love to help you out in there. How about you? What is your fiance like? Into the details, not in the details, opinionated, having no opinion at all whatsoever. And if so, how's your decision fatigue going? Let me know. Sound off in the comments down below. <laughs> we can commiserate together because wedding planning uh, itself like planning an actual wedding, it's not difficult, but it's the emotions, the expectations, and the finances that get in the way. So that's what we have for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, jump on down there, hit that like button, and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day decision-fatigued bride. And until next time, bye, guys.